Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing another video of checking out one of your guys' systems. So, today we have got one system to check out from Zeonaut in Discord, so a massive thank you to them for sending this system in. But before we get started guys, if you haven't already, make sure to press that like and subscribe button to help us on the journey to 30,000 subscribers as we're getting closer and closer by the day, so a massive, massive thank you um, to you all for that. And also, Happy New Year! This, this is the first video I'm actually filming in 2023 but anyway so that all said and done let's rock and roll so let's go ahead and see what they're prepared for us so it should already be on the list here I'm assuming at the bottom there it is the this air system is called the angler system so let's see what zeonaut's got for us here whoa Ooh. oh yeah oh i like that okay so Ooh. okay Ooh. what's that red orbit look at that red orbit that's a pretty uh pretty wild orbit okay so star itself the angler system discovered by the human race info do a size comparison if you can and check if you missed any planets at the end one last thing you can run this system as well or we like that okay so the star itself angler a star around the size of the sun but has 10 times the luminosity this makes it a a class star so here it is so yeah looking good a little more powerful than the sun and all of its uh, spec there looking very very nice okay so first of the planets Ella, a battered rock very similar to Mercury in our solar system, although the colours are drastically different and it is a lot warmer. Oh yeah, okay. But still a hot rock, so... There we are. Okay, next up we've got U uh, Uralis. Uralis, sorry. Um, a very warm desert world. This planet might have possibly had life through since it didn't have the necessary ingredients for life, even with little water. Life can still possibly live here, especially near the poles. Okie dokie. Can you see it somewhere? Yeah, there's some water going on there. Okay, let's check its stats out. Why not? So, down here we can see. Yep, yeah, still got some stats going on there. Very nice. And then it also has one moon as well. A moon orbiting, pretty brown one at that. To make up for this, it's rich in resources like gold and platinum. Cool. Okay. Next up, we've got Plutonia. Okay, right. Hello. Extremely tidy locked wasteland. Although the land just looks like rocket, it's actually plutonium, giving it a na giving it its name. The planet is extremely harsh again, with lava oceans and huge ash clouds around the planet. Okay, so you can see, yeah, that orange that is actually, yeah, oh yeah. So it's all frozen on the other side, obviously, because it is tidy locked as well. Okay, looking good. It also has one moon as well. A cold looking moon at first. It is actually a pretty warm moon. So, specifically 322 Fahrenheit, 161 at Celsius. The blue spots you see are actually frozen. Cool. There we are. Alright, looking good. Okay, next up we have got this one over here. Dye. Uh, pretty genetic gas giant besides that huge organic band. Okay, interesting stuff. Uh, the organic band is made by plants in the atmosphere floating in the equator because of this planet's spin. So the planet has life, but we're not sure of sentient life. Okay. As a, an Earth-like moon, it's dangerously close. I mean, Roosh limit would probably tear that apart. Okay. A dark water moon. Nothing much to say about this one, just kind of warm and wet. <laughs> so it's quite hot as well. I'm sure that's going to get some tidal uh, interactions going on there, that's for sure. Okay. Next up, we've got this world as well. So, a warm desert moon, although it does have life under the oceans, it is very diverse and probably has one of the most fascinating things a human can see. Okay. Cool. Right, so next up we've got Avalia, the Earth analogue of the system. Okay, so... Looking good. Oh, yeah, okay. So... So, um, it has extremely diverse life under the oceans and on land. The currently unnamed aliens that mostly control the planet have cities similar to Earth in the 2000s. Okay. Looking good. So we have Nuclear Moon. Nuclear Moon. A moon of um, Avalia with unusual amounts of radioactive elements. Maybe the city-making species on Avalia has something to do with this. Okay. We've got one more moon as well. Minmus. A very small moan with frozen lakes and huge hills. We're also planning to mine it because we want ice cream. Okay, so there is that. So it looks like it's sank from a KSP. Yeah, totally not a KSP reference. Okay. Um, then we have a Barry Center here. Interesting. Okay, so what is that all about? Why is there a Barry Center there? What's causing that? 
So it's the center of mass between two objects. Well, what? Ah! Aha! Okay, so. In a binary. So, Tokta, on a binary orbit with Vola, an extremely mineral rich planet, including various types of rare elements and metals. And in binary, the other one, um, a pretty barren, cold, and snowy wasteland. Nothing else to say besides there's a few rare elements. Cool. Looking good. Yeah, I wouldn't have spoiled those unless I saw the barrier center there. So hidden in that asteroid belt there. Okay. Okay, so now we got um, Aglafar. A planet around six times the size of Earth, but the mass of about one and a half of Jupiter. The planet is a huge ice giant and the variety of colors uh, comes from the colors of Neptunian, a newly discovered gas. Okay, looking good. So there it is. A nice mix of Uranus and Neptune sort of shades together in there. So that's a nice looking gas giant that is. Also got two moons as well. This one's been battered. Look at that. Okay. A moon being torn apart and ripped to shreds. That reminds me of Miranda, in a way. Okay. Looking good. And then lastly, we, over here, we got uh, Ubery. A potentially Hattel moon can see that as very dim cities on it, so maybe it means another alien race is on it. If you notice, the unusual colour of the plants is blue. This is because of it's pretty far away from the star, making the plants consume more blue or darker light. One last thing, the planet is tidy locked, so if you can see the large parent planet in the sky, you'll see it forever. Awesome stuff. Okay. Nice. Okay, moving on. So we have this planet next. Tastayan. A frozen planet full of dangerous things like ice breaking, levitons, collapsing ice shelves, huge tectonic shifts, and even a core rupture. Ooh. That's nasty. Okay. Cool. Okay, where are we heading next? So we've done that one. Do we do Tenel? Where's that? Where is that? Interesting, hang on. Is that... That's not that over there. Are we missing one? So we went to the ice giant. Hang on, are these moon... Oh, oh, hang on. Oh, I see. Okay, we didn't... I didn't even notice that one. Though. Okay, so we checked out those two moons. And then we have Baron over here. And this has its own moons as well. Okay. Another moon, possibly binding around the main one. It is also an ice giant. Okay, so it has Nebula... A core of another moon that mostly got torn to shreds. Okay. And then Tenel. A moon with beautiful arches and caverns on it. Also gets the brown colour from uh, Nifonium. Okay. And that's obviously very close to its parent planet as well. Okay. There's definitely some Roosh limit going on in here. Okay. Okay. So now moving on to the next object out. So this is a, a brown dwarf by the looks of it. Okay. A gas, to, a gas giant that was on the verge of becoming a star. Sally, it did not, but on the process, it burned up all of its ice moons. Okay, so there it is. So, Lectu. So, a wasteful and barren rock for this one, and then Spen, another wasteful, uninteresting rock. Okay. Whoa. Oh, there's a hidden code in there. Oh, my God. What the heck? Okay, we're going to have to type that out. Okay. So, um... Next up, we've got poor step. Okay, so over here. A dwarf planet similar to Europa, but not any orbs in the other planets. A really interesting thing about that is it has oceans and neon. Now, that is awesome. Look at that. Oh, yeah. That does look good. I do like that. Okay, then we have Kula. Another dwarf planet. It seems to be made by recently bashed together comets, which is this one over here. Okay, so... So, what is this? Trojan... So, what is this? Okay, so there it is. Oh. Okay, so. W H A T. What? S T H S. Okay, yeah. Let me let me just get um. Just get us a note a notepad up. Let me write all this down. Okay, so. Where are we? Let's get some notes up. Okay, so new note. Okay, so so we know the first word is what. So W H A T. Then we have is what is I S. The, what is this? Is the that T H I S? What is this? A abomination. Abomination. 
got G O R Abomination. So abomination. So what is this abomination? So there's the N, then that ends, then it has Z G T. Z G T Z G R T End of message. Interesting. Trojan. So what does Z G R T mean? Yeah, Z G R T. That it's not a word of where is that then what is this abomination is what that says interesting so it has a word the heck whoa so that that's strange that's very very strange so i want to know what the z g r t a bit at the end of the message means so that's all of the objects in here so that's trojan that's a very great, crazy orbit going on there. And, oh, sun, hello. So all this all about? Hello. Right. Oh. Hey, hey. Sun, Earth, Mercury. What's this all about then? Hey. Hang on. So why is Mercury there? Jupiter in a binary of the sun. It's closer than it normally is as well. What is that all about? Interesting, very interesting. So why's the sun there? Okay. So there's Angler over here. That's bizarre stuff. Right, okay. So. Whew, interesting system. I want to know more about that abomination. What is that all about? Okay. But actually, one thing I wanted to check out. He said we can run the simulation, so we've checked it all out now. Actually, we'll get a lineup before we start doing things. So here it is. So the sun is in here as well. It's a little smaller than, a little bigger than the sun, as we saw. There's the brown dwarf. Obviously, Jupiter's in here, as we saw it in the other uh, solar system over there. Then we've got the ice giants. I really do like this one. This one's really, really nice. Then we've got Trojan in all of the light this time. Very, very strange world. And so all the Rockies down here. Really, really like that glowing ice one as well. That's really, really cool. So let me go back to the big ice giant, because I want to see. There was a moon really close to it, wasn't there? Uh, hang on, was it this one? No, no, hang on. It was the regular generic gas giant. It was this one. This seems really close to me. I'm thinking Roosh Limit could tear this up. Let's press play. See what happens. Oh, can we speed up? Oh, hello. Why is this stuck then? Oi. Uh, let's just go to a minute. Can I, can I go to a minute? Oi. Uh, one. Oh, there we go. I guess you just completely frozen the simulation down. All right, there we are. So, no roosh limit or anything? Yeah, very, very shock. That's really close, though. I mean, whew, how is that still going? I mean, that other moon is huge as well compared to this one. Okay, so surely, 11 hours. So surely, if you move it a tad closer, you'd start to see some sort of uh, roosh limit go on here. Or you can crash into it. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, dear. Oh, oh. Okay, that's... Uh... Yeah, we've kind of just destroyed this. Sorry. Oh, dear. It's a massive collision with the parent planet there. <laughs> okay, that's just going to fall into the, the gas giant now. Look, yeah. Oh, uh oh. Whoops, today is it. So maybe Bruce Limit won't destroy it after all. It looked like maybe it was holding in position quite nicely there. But oh, dear. Whoops, today is it. So that's gone. Wasn't there another one that had a close... Uh, I think it was... Uh, the, yeah, around Baron here. It already had that moon. It was destroyed, didn't it? What about... Is it, is it any close... Okay, they're all they're all safe distance away. I mean, this thing's already been reduced to nothingness anyway. Okay. Oh, yeah. That, that binary in the Barry Center could be quite interesting because it looked like they were quite close. Let's see how those two behave. I mean, if they're in a Barry Center, they should be perfectly... The center of gravity should be perfectly in between. So, in theory, there shouldn't be any problems. Yeah, they'll be fine. Yeah, there's no uh, left unless something upsets the orbits. They're they're all good to go. Got that little moon there, but it doesn't seem to be causing any uh, any problems. Okay. Let's see what happens if you speed the sim up. I want to see what happens if the Trojan abomination comes in. Oh, there's a very wobbly orbit there because of that other gas giant. Oh. Okay. So let's see what happens when this Trojan. Let's actually just speed it up a bit. Oh. Sped it up quite a bit there. So let's actually just watch it as it comes in. Here we go. 
Oh, see, some orbit's broken there. That little nebula moon's broken away, look. Okay. So, what happens when the Trojan flies in? How actually large is this thing? Okay, so nothing ridiculously big. Okay, so it's going to fly in. Imagine if it just made the whole system just explode when it flew in. <laughs> So it's a Trojan object being picked up from interstellar space. So the abomination planet. Very, very strange stuff. Okay. But yeah, there we go. So that does it through the Angular system. So I must say thank you to Xeonot for sending this system in. I quite enjoyed that. It was kind of an interesting little one there. So yeah, I must say thanks to him. And yeah, guys, make sure to also subscribe. Hit that like button if you haven't already. And yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. And that will send done. Guys, again, a massive thank you to Xeonot for sending this system in. And yeah, that all said and done. Make sure you guys stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.